today, Satan. Not today, Nick. Not today, ankles. We don't have it. Questions. Where's my cocktail? Where? That's my opinion. All right. You ruined it. You ruined it. You did. Okay. What the f is this? The lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. <laughs> you are the biggest bully in Hollywood, and everyone knows it. Before we start, it is time to give a shout out to our partners of this video and are the beautiful people of Jibu Beauty. They have an amazing skincare collection that will make your skin and your soul look amazing. Their personal mission in life is to make your skin glow. From the Super Duo to the Multitasking Tint Moisturizer to even their new Enchanted Bloom collection, everything that they offer is just perfection. So if you want to get your products, make sure to go to the link on the description below and do not forget to use my discount code ANDY15 and you will get between 15 and 20% off. So get your products right now. Jibu Beauty, inspired by dreams, made for reality. Hey, hello, Beret Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beret Hills, and welcome to another Q&A, another Bravo Q&A. Girl, as usual, it is Monday. It is chill Mondays. We are just having fun. You know, like you think that Sundays, fun days are a thing. No, now chill Mondays are what we are about. Like this is the vibe. This is what, you know, we're doing right now because we need to go and have a short and productive week and Mondays kind of like doesn't allow us to do that you know so why why give Monday that power anyways guys I hope you're having an amazing day and right now we're about to do another Bravo Q&A as usual every Monday I'm giving you now a Bravo Q&A remember that on Fridays I keep giving you guys I leaving you guys the posts on my Instagram stories, on Twitter, on my community po uh, tab, you know, so you can leave all of your Bravo related questions and I will get your answers, okay? And that's what we're doing right now. Guys, I know, espe especially after the news broke of what happened with Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levi and Ariana Maddox here in West Hollywood with Vanderpump Rules. The amount of questions that you sent me related to Vanderpump Rules were a lot, you know, and many of those were like very repetitive. So I tried to just go, just take uh, some of them. I'm going to be answering some of them, but I also like wanted to like go and, and find other questions, you know, and I, I'm glad that you guys are still interested on like talking about New Jersey or Beverly Hills or Potomac or Orange County or Miami or wherever, you know, because girl, I mean, the thing is like, I will usually answer these questions about Vanderpump Rules, but many of them I have already answered on previous videos. You know, I have been doing a lot of videos about Vanderpump Rules. So like, why just kind of like repeat myself? So if you do not find the answer to your specific question on Vanderpump Rules here, it was probably already answered in one of the other uh, videos, all right? So with that being said, I will going to answer some of them, but not all of them because girl, it was a lot. And I'm going to try to like, you know, mix it up with, uh, you know, a little bit of the other ones. So with that being said, guys, so let's talk about this uh, mess. And we're going to go with our first question, which is coming from Jaishka. And she's asking, will, uh, will Bravo ever ask the producers on TV if Melissa begged to be on the show? Well, this is what we know. Like, it is a fact now. Like, we're not even, like, asking ourselves this anymore. It is a fact that Melissa Gorga came into the Real Housewife of New Jersey behind Teresa's back, you know? And that she was, in fact, begging the producers all the way from season one to put her on the show. Now, will Bravo ever ask the producers? I mean, it is not a question because, honestly, Bravo doesn't really give a shit, you know? I mean, this is more like a story between, you know, like a feud between Teresa Judice and Melissa Gorga. But Bravo doesn't really care if, you know, who begged who or who did what, you know? Like, who cares? I mean, it happened. So, whatever. 
right? But yes, like that's 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 a fact. It has been now confirmed by several people, you know, from producers who were uh, back then to cast members who were back then to a lot of friends and people that know about it. That yes, in fact, Melissa Gorga back her way into the show because Teresa did not want her in the show, okay? So that's a fact. Uh, Mary Coon asked, did you hear that Lala is being sued for, uh, for a knife attack on Faith? I did hear about that. This is related to Vanderpump Rules. So this is like an old tea. I did hear about that, but it's not like like he took the knife and went like after her trying to kill her no it was more kind of like remember what candace throw a knife to ashley you know it was kind of like that situation so that lawsuit is really not gonna go anywhere um <clears throat> lady lady xd ask why is andy cohen allowing criminal bitches who screw each other friends and physical abuse i mean girl this is reality tv okay like this is what it what it needs to happen that sometimes it get too too dark yes you know but there there will not be reality tv at all if it wasn't because of the drama even if you go to other kind of reality TV, like competition reality TV, like The Traders or The Amazing Race or Survivor or, you know, Big Brother, all of those reality TVs are the, the most rated episodes are where the drama is at its highest point. OK, so stop hating on the game. That's reality show. Of course, having a criminal on TV Girl, look at what happened with Jen Shaw. Look at what happened with Erica Jane. Even with Teresa Judas. Like those seasons were the higher rating, rated seasons because people crave that. If people didn't like that, they wouldn't put that on TV. At the end of the day, reality TV is not about like, oh, let's show this, you know, out of fun. No, it's all about numbers. So maybe a lot of people don't like having a criminal on their TVs, you know, but believe me, that number, that amount of people get outnumbered by the amount of people who really want to watch people dragging each other on TV, you know, so it's a game of numbers. No one is going to create a reality show with no drama because no one will be watching that, period. That's the way reality TV works. <laughs> All right. Let's move on with the next question. Rainbow Kravitz says, what do you think about Michael Darby suing Candace Dealer Bassett? What do I think? I think the guy is stupid. I mean, he's just playing dumb, okay? He is the one who is has been in the middle of scandals literally since season one like sexual scandal after sexual scandal after sexual scandal. He was the one grabbing other people's asses without their consent. And he is the one who was actually kind of protected by Bravo on several occasions, you know? Now, if he actually continues and move forward with the lawsuit, it's going to be bad on him because Bravo already gave her their full support to Candace Dealer, which means that if this move forward, they're going to have to give Candace all the tea of what really have been going down with Michael Darby and all the things that they did not put out there. And who is going to end up looking like an ass? Well, Michael Darby. So he's dumb by doing this. Plus, <coughs> oh, I'm going to sue you for defamation for saying that I pay someone to suck a dick. Bitch, that's like the stupidest thing ever. Like no one really cares about that. OK, and he's looking for two million dollars. Girl, go find for the money to pay for Ashley's home somewhere else because this is not going to be it. Um, Rhonda Straub asks, how can they have, how can they save the crumbling housewife franchise? So I think this question is talking about your personal feelings about the housewife franchise because let me tell you something. 
believe me when I'm telling you this, the Housewife franchise itself is not crumbling down anytime soon. A lot of people try to put information out there that, oh my God, they're doing so bad. Oh my God, they this. They are not, okay? Like the rating numbers right now, it's insanely good. And no one really cares anymore about live ratings because no one really watched live TV anymore, okay? It's all about streaming. It's all about, you know, Peacock and Hulu and all of that. Um, people are watching Real Housewives from everywhere around the world, okay? People, uh, like, there are other countries where Real Housewife is being shown on Netflix, okay? So, believe me, they are not crumbling down. Um, Real Housewife of New Jersey just have 2.2 million viewers on the season premiere. Vanderpump Rules got 1.8 million viewers. All of this, yeah, that, that there are some there are seasons that are boring and that they're really gonna try to do something else. <coughs> that is true. But the franchise itself is not crumbling down. <coughs> Sorry guys. I'm still a little bit sick. Um, now I have I have said this before, okay? The people who don't like Housewife is because they don't like change. You know, and well, some of some of the times, you know, that they don't like change. And these shows are definitely changing with the times. So unless you acknowledge that we are not living on the same times that we were living 10 years ago, that we cannot have housewife until they are like 80 years old, then those people are the ones that are going to be thinking, oh, these shows are bad. But the shows are actually not bad. The, act the shows are actually really good. That's why new franchises of Housewife keep appearing around the world because the formula works. That's why we have like three or four franchises on South Africa. We have Real Housewife in, Am in Amsterdam. We have Real Housewife in Italy. We have Real Housewife uh, in Australia. We have Real Housewife everywhere, you know? So that's that. Uh, Barbara Romeo asks, what do you think about the tea about Raquel and Tom Sandoval? Look, I, again, I mean, this, this, I, I choose this question because it, this kind of like generalize everything because there are so much to talk about them. So again, if you want really specifics, go to my other videos. I, I have, I think I have already posed like probably eight videos about this whole Vanderpump Rules scandal because there is so much out there. But my personal opinion, Tom Sandoval is an asshole. Raquel is a disgusting human being. And what they did to Ariana is unthinkable. Not that it's unthinkable because many people do this, but it's horrible, you know, and it's evil. And especially after what we learn of how they wanted Ariana to find out. Girl, I mean, if you haven't watched that video, go and watch that video after you finish this one, okay? So those two definitely deserve each other. They're saying that they love each other. They probably do. So go live your life. But I feel at this point that Tom Sandoval and Raquel should leave Vanderpump Rules. That simple. But who knows? You know, there is a lot of things that, that are in the middle of that happening. So we're gonna have to wait and see. So next question comes from Adams Newman. And girl, this is like a long one. This is like a whole like, like filling uh, journal, you know? And he says, can you guess how many lies the Gorgas have told since they've been on the show? Neither can I. I've started watching since season two reunion I'm up to the current season now. Melissa admitted that she called Danielle when she was pregnant with Joy. Her exact words to Teresa were, I hated you back then. That was season four. She admitted it right to Teresa's face. Then she admitted it again at a party. There, there's also all kind of lies about how she met Joe. She changed her story three times. First, she said she was a teacher teaching. Then it changed to, I just finished college. I hadn't begun working yet. I mean, it goes on and on with her lies and her story. 
She can't even remember them all. I encourage anyone start rewatching and see if you can keep up with the lies. You know, before Peacock, it was hard to remember or you or you just thought you were crazy like did I hear her say that. Now the proof is right there. I really hope they go this season. I'm so done with them. <clears throat> you are 100% right. You know, um, the amount of lies that the Gorgas have been saying over the years is insane. The way that they manipulate and gaslight Teresa for years, it was insane. But now their web of lies is just crumbling down. So that's it, you know, uh, and I... I do believe that we could potentially be watching at the last season of the Gorgas on the Real Housewife of New Jersey. All right, uh, Raju, Raju or Rahu, I don't know, 85 says, is it true Raquel Levi's name is not Raquel? Well, I'm do, um, there is another video about that, um, but yes, so Raquel Levi's is actually not Raquel, Raquel, you know? Her name is actually Rachel. Mm -hmm. And I did put that on another video because apparently a co-worker's friends, uh, this is something that someone posts. It says, a co my co-worker friend know her and grew up with her and said she changed her name for the show and that she is never gone by Raquel before. That she kind of not who she, that she's kind of not who portrays on the show. So that's that. Yeah, her name is not Raquel. Her name is Rachel, which it gave me a lot of like sociopath vibes at this point. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's move on with the next one. It says, Maria Salot asks, who pays for the events on the Real Housewife shows? Oh, this is an interesting question. And I did find some answers about that. So apparently, Bravo pays for every single, well, almost every single event that you see with all of the ladies on them, you know. So Bravo will create these events. Producers will put together these events all the time. However, if there is a specific event that the actual housewife is throwing, then that the tab and everything runs on them or bravo will give them a small budget you know and say like hey you have ten thousand dollars to for this party and then they will use the ten thousand dollars and then they put the rest of the money i'm talking when they're doing like their own event like kyle richards white parties or even like jen shaw Marilyn Marks, you know, $80,000 party, you know, or like that kind of situations when it's like the housewife who wants to go all the way out and put like all the shit out there, then the housewife pays for everything. But the the little dinners, you know, that we see that every, uh, uh, you know, they're all together or like, you know, I, I want to have lunch with the ladies or, you know, I want to like all of those kind of things. Uh, usually Bravo put everything together and they pay for everything, all right? <clears throat> Bujimo underscore ask, uh, da, uh, no, I'm sorry, did Schwartz knew about Raquel and Sandoval? So, these are the questions. These are the question and there is uh, different answers. I have been talking to several people and this is what I gather and what I believe to be true. I, uh, for what I have heard, Schwartz did not know about Raquel and Sandoval from the very beginning. They have been hooking up for at least seven months. And there are some people saying that it could go even way longer to when Raquel was already dating uh, or still dating James Kennedy, you know, but Apparently, Schwartz learned about this very recently. Like, I'm talking like weeks ago, you know? So, <clears throat> you know, and according to Tom Sandoval, which I know that he's not a reliable source, but he says that Schwartz never encouraged this relationship. So that's why I know a lot of people are thinking that because they are best friends, then, then you know, they, they contrive this master plan to like cover everything up. 
But from what I know and what I heard, this is not the case. And actually, Raquel might have been hooking up with Schwartz at the same time that she, that he was, that she was hooking up with Sandoval. But that was a plan between Sandoval and Raquel not involving Schwartz consentment, you know, consentment, you know. So, yeah, that's 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 what we know so far. Uh, last question is from Sora Eheman, and she asked, will Erica be phased out next season? Erica Jane from the Real Houses of Beverly Hills. Well, that's what we're hearing, okay? So I, I hear two things about this. First of all, the news that, you know, are everywhere that the ladies are very not happy with Erica Jane, especially everything related the earrings and she not wanted to return them and then she fighting the return and like all of that and that they are being very vocal against Erica Jane, you know, and that they don't want to hang out with her anymore. However, producers are pushing Erica Jane on everyone and that's why she keeps being invited to every single event, you know, but they don't want Erica Jane anymore on the show. Also, and I told you these guys a long time ago, this was an exclusive that <clears throat> They're going to be introducing some new housewife, housewives this season that are potentially going to be the replacement of Erica Jane. So basically, Erica will be meeting her replacement in real life, probably without knowing it. OK, so that's it, guys. That's all the questions. I know that there, there is a lot more, but a lot of them were like really Vanderpump related. And again. Just go and watch all the other videos because it's just way too long. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below. And if you have any more Bravo questions, stay tuned every Friday. Go to my community tab here on YouTube or go to my Instagram stories or on Twitter. Find the post and you can leave me all your questions in there and I will get you answers. All right. So let me know what you guys think on the comments below and... If you want to get all the tea related to any Bravo show or pop culture, make sure to subscribe, 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 hit the notification bell, and I'll see you around. See ya. Bye.